Hello there. In this video, we're going to briefly discuss three special but simple probability mass functions. The very first PMF that we're going to discuss is what we call the degenerate PMF. The second distribution that we will discuss is the Bernoulli, so Bernoulli probability mass function. And the third is what we will call the uniform distribution. So we will discuss what these distributions represent, a couple examples on where they can be used, and we're also going to describe some properties, namely the expectation and the variance of these random variables in this video. So let's start with the simplest of simple PMFs, namely the degenerate distribution. So the degenerate PMF. All right, so the degenerate PMF uh, can be defined as follows. So the probability that x is equal to x is gonna be equal to one if x is equal to one, and it's gonna be zero if x is equal to zero or some people say not equal to one. So the only set value for which this sample set can take, so the support of this function, namely is the values uh, one. So uh, this is extremely uh, basic to interpret. So this means an event that always will occur. So any event that is certain to occur, there's you know only one possible event. For example, if there's one person standing in a room and then you randomly select a person, then it's a guaranteed choice that you're going to get that under normal circumstances. Uh, a more explicit example, uh, let us assume we have the set of values one, two, and three, and we're interested in the event that the probability that the number in this set is bigger than zero. So all of those numbers are bigger than zero, so this is guaranteed to be one. Uh, moreover, the complement of this, the probability that x in this set is less than or equal to zero, this is impossible uh, in this sense. So that would be a basic uh, sort of intuitive example of a degenerate distribution. Uh, let's move our attention to a more common case, which is called the Bernoulli uh, PMF. So the Bernoulli PMF can be defined as follows. So the probability uh, that x is equal to 1, uh, we define to be equal to lowercase p, and we're going to define it to be 1 minus p, if x is uh, equal to zero or not equal to one. So let's call it, just call it zero. So the support of this function is gonna be the values zero and one, or one and zero. So one is the probability of the event of interest occurring, and one minus the p, one minus p is pretty much the probability of its complement. So the degenerate probability mass function is a special scenario of the Bernoulli PMF for which uh, it's possible that our event of interest could not occur. Uh, so uh, let's take a example just as we had before. Let's consider the set uh, one, two, and three. So we know that the probability that the number in the set S, if randomly selected, bigger than or equal to two, if all of these numbers are equally likely to be selected, is gonna be two minus three. So this is the probability of success. So we can also clearly see that the, if we randomly choose a number in S, that the complement is true, that's gonna be one minus two over three, which is gonna be one third. So this is one minus P, which some people uh, just abbreviate as Q. So the only two events possible for a Bernoulli case is either it or its complement. Some people will refer to it as a true or false or success or failure, which is sometimes associated to Bernoulli events. The third case or special distribution is the uniform 
So we're going to assume our uh, support is one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to N. Some people do A through B, but I'm just gonna make it one to N, so you can pretty much shift it. So the uniform distribution has the property that the probability that of XK is gonna be equal to the probability of XJ. And this is gonna be for all K, J, in the interval 1m. And let's assume that's a subset of the real numbers, uh, natural numbers. So this means that all events in S are equally likely. So that means one event does not really have an advantage of being selected over the other. Very common example, uh, for example, uh, you roll a die, or you roll a six-sided die. So the probability, um, and let's call that number x. So the probability that x is equal to 1 is, of course, equal to the probability that x is equal to 2, is equal to the probability that x is equal to 6, all of which are equal to 1 sixth. So if we were to graph these values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so these are the values of x, and this is the value of px. So all of these values are going to have the same value, namely 1 sixth. So those are the three basic simple probability mass functions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to derive the properties for the expected value, the second moment, and the variance for each of these three random variables. So let's again start with the degenerate random variable. And let's call that random variable x. So the expectation of x, by definition, is the sum of all values of x and its support of x, the values, times that corresponding probability value. So there's only one value in the support of a degenerate distribution, namely 1, and the probability of it occurring is going to be 1. So 1 times 1 is 1, so therefore the expectation of a degenerate random variable is 1. Similarly, the second moment of a random variable x, by definition, is going to be the sum of cross all x in its support times x squared times px. So again, there's only one value in its support, so that's going to be 1 squared times its probability, which is, of course, equal to 1. So the variance, which we know, can be found by doing the second moment minus the square of the mean. So the second moment is 1. The mean is 1, so we square that, so that's 1 minus 1, which is 0. So these are the three uh, most common properties of random variable, the expectation, second moment, and variance, which are 1, 1, 0, respectively, for a degenerate distribution. So let's do the same for a Bernoulli random variable. And let's call that random variable x again. So let's start with the expectation of x. So again, by definition, this is the sum across all x times x times p of x. So Bernoulli has two events that could occur, uh, one and its complement, which we're going to call zero. So we have the first event, zero times the probability of zero plus one times the probability of one. So recall the probability of zero is defined to be one minus p, and the probability of one is defined to be p. So zero times anything is zero, and one times p is p. So the probability, or the expectation of that, is going to be the probability of success. The second moment, so again, is the sum across all x of x squared px. So that's going to be 0 squared times 1 minus p plus 1 squared times p. So 0 squared times anything is itself. 1 squared is 1 times p. So that, again, is just going to be equal to p, the probability of success. The variance, remember, is going to be the second moment minus the square of the mean. So the second moment is p minus the square of the expectation, or the mean, which is p squared. So notice we can factor out a p. So we have p times p minus 1, or p times 1 minus p. So it's the probability of success times the probability of failure.
And some people will rewrite that as P times Q. So those are the three basic properties for a Bernoulli random variable. So now let's work on the uniform random variable. And again, let's call that X. So the first, the expectation of X is going to be the sum across all X and its support of X times P of X. So we're going to assume that the support of this function is 1, 2, 3, all the way up to N, where there's N values for which each of them are equally likely. So the probability of any X in S is going to be equal to 1 over N for all X in S. So we have, this is going to be equal to 1 times the probability of 1, plus 2 times the probability of 2, plus all the way down to N times the probability of N. So the probability of 1 is 1 over N, the probability of 2 is 1 over N, and the probability of N is 1 over N as well. I'm going to factor out a 1, out of 1 over N out of all these terms. So I have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way down to N. So remember, this is a sum of natural numbers from 1 to N, which has a special sum property, namely N times N plus 1 divided by 2. So this can be re represented as 1 over n times n times n plus 1 over 2. Our n's cancel algebraically, so we're just left with n plus 1 over 2 as our final result. So therefore, the expectation of a uniform random variable on the interval 1 to n is going to be equal to n plus 1 over 2, which everyone should know is pretty much the mid-range of the variable. So the sum of x squared, or the second moment, uh, is going to have a similar property. So this is going to be equal to 1 squared times p of 1 plus 2 squared times p of 2 plus all the way down to n squared times p of n. Remember, p of 1, p of 2, p of 3 all are equal to 1 over n, so I'm going to factor that out. So I have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way down to n squared. So again, I have a sum of squares now. And remember, there's a special formula for that, uh, namely n times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6. Uh, and if you don't know how to derive that, there's definitely a cute summation ways to prove that. So I have 1 over n times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So n's will cancel out of there. So therefore the second moment of a uniform random variable on the interval 1n is going to be equal to n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Not really a cute formula for that, definitely. Third property, let's do the variance of a uniform random variable on 1n. So again, that's going to be the mean, I mean the second moment, minus the square of the mean. So our second moment came out to this nasty looking formula minus the mean was the mid-range, so we need to square that. So we're going to get, let's FOIL this, so we're going to have 2n squared plus n plus 2n, this is going to be 3n plus 1, minus, so we're going to have n squared plus 2n plus 1, uh, let's not combine them yet, so that's over 6, that's over 4, so I'm going to multiply this by 2, and I'm going to multiply this by 3. So we have, what do we have? 4n squared minus 3n squared, so that's going to give us n squared on the top. Then I have 6n minus 6n on top, so that's going to give you 0. 
you have 2 minus 3, so that's going to be minus 1, all over 4 times 3, which is 12. So this is the variance of a uniform random variable on 1n, which actually is a pretty cute format. So that is a pretty much overview or basic introduction to the degenerate Bernoulli and uniform discrete random variables and their basic properties. Hope you enjoyed.